Hello, I'm Ravinda Bogle and I'm a journalist, a cook and the owner of Giacconi in Marylebone. It's incredibly inspiring to be able to travel and eat food from different cultures and discover new ingredients when they want to show you, um, you know, that, that you're welcome somewhere, that you're safe somewhere. It's always food that's offered. I arrived here as an immigrant when I was seven years old. I was born in Kenya, in Nairobi, and my ancestry or my parents are Indian. Uh, but then when you look at the heritage of India, there is so much Persian ancestry as well. So I already had all of that, and then I, I arrived in, in Great Britain, and I lived in a very densely immigrant community. And you, you know, you begin to shop at the Chinese supermarket or the Turkish supermarket, and that kind of feeds into your, your heritage. And I think that is what immigrant food is, that kind of constant e evolution, the adaptation of what's your own, layered with what is around you. So at Giacconi we call ourselves a no borders kitchen because we feel that food is such a powerful language. It's a language that everyone speaks, everyone understands and it brings communities and people from all over the world together. I had this incredi incredible experience um, some years ago when I was filming in Morocco in Agadir. It was 48 degrees and I was making a film about tomatoes and I was about to do a piece to camera and suddenly felt very, very sick and the next thing I knew I'd fainted. And when I woke up, I just remember following the sound of voices into this courtyard where these women had laid out the most incredible meal for me and I didn't speak any Arabic or French, and they didn't speak any English, but we just sort of sat there, and that, you know, the language of, of food was our language. One of the things that we do here, it's kind of a signature, I've always had it on the menu, and it's so popular, is our prawn toast scotch egg with banana ketchup and pickled cucumber. And when you look at that, it's, you know, you've got two perennial favorites, the British Scotch egg, the Chinese prawn toast. And what we've done is we've brought them together and we've created something new. What we're trying to say, I suppose, is quite political because when you bring cultures together, you're actually creating something that's better than the sum of their parts. And I think that's really powerful. What makes me feel at home is hospitality and people making you feel welcome. And it's funny because when people come to Giacconi, they always say like, oh, I feel like I'm at home. We've had Lebanese people, Egyptian people, French people. And because our food is so mixed and diverse, people will sort of eat it and go, oh, this tastes like something my grandmother used to cook. I love being in Italy because Italy strangely always feels like home even though I have no Italian ancestry or links. Um, but I feel like the Italians as people are very much like Indians in their kind of nature. They're very loud, they love food, they love family, they love community, um, they're passionate about produce. One place that springs to mind is Trattoria Dardano in um, Cortona in Italy. And it happened to be the place of uh, a chef called Paolo Castello, who I've now become very good friends with. My favorite thing is their tiramisu. It is the best tiramisu I have ever eaten in my life. He saw I was enjoying it so much, so he went into the kitchen, bought this huge bowl of it, and just put it on my table and went, knock yourself out. And I did. I feel that I come from a line of just terrific female cooks. My mother really believed that all her children should be able to learn to, 
to, to cook and, and be part of it because we lived in an extended family. And so I remember sitting out in the courtyard with a giant sack of peas and a red plastic bucket on a little stool, podding peas, you know, that was my job. All these aunties would arrive like early in the morning and you'd hear their sandals clip-clopping across the terrazzo floor and the sort of buzz of gossip. I really wanted to preserve that tradition because that is so underrepresented in restaurants. Women are so underrepresented in restaurants. My favorite food memory of growing up in Kenya is related to my grandfather. So on Sundays, he would take me to this ice cream parlor, which was like a temple of kitsch called Snow Cream in, in the city. And I think for someone like my grandfather, who'd seen such hard times, the luxury of something like ice cream meant he was okay, he'd done okay. It's not just about the food on the plate, but it's about the story behind the dish. And as a writer as well, that is what I'm always interested in. So in my book, for example, I've written a story uh, for a recipe, coffee rascullas with mascarpone ice cream and espresso caramel. So a rascullas is like a, a sweet Indian dumpling. The story that accompanies that recipe is a story about a woman who I had witnessed this about a woman who was a victim of domestic violence. Her husband has died and she comes home from the hospital and there are all these mourners in her house. She sort of steadies herself, wipes her eyes and goes to the refrigerator where she finds this bowl of rascullas. All these women in her community, this Indian community, this very close-minded community, are kind of shocked that a woman with grief could have such an appetite. And it's the judgment that's passed. And it's this story of this very triumphant, strong woman who has just discovered the sweetness of a new life and how this rascullah becomes a medium for that. I remember standing under a tree in Bethlehem. The trunk was so wide, like I can't even tell you how wide it was. Someone said to me, you know, they say that this tree is 7,500 years before Christ, and in his lifetime, Christ would have walked past this tree. And I just remember standing there and just goosebumps. Like it was just an incredible moment that I'll never forget. I think food can transport you to another place, another time. It's very, very nostalgic. There's a dish we have on the menu here, which is a Carolyn dish. It's called moili, and we make it with lobster. And it's just such a wonderfully restorative broth. And it has turmeric in it, which kind of turns it this sunny yellow color. So you could be in the darkest day in Britain in November, and then you have a bowl of this sunny broth in front of you, and it transports you straight back to the backwaters of Kerala.